So uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, my name is Win Seong Huang. I am an author, a registered Forex commodity trading advisor, and also a registered professional engineer. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what is a Forex CTA um, and why should you register for the DEX designations. So here's the outline of my presentation is why register for a CTA, the 95% efforts that require prior to the registration process, the efforts that you need to study on the Series 3 and Series 34 exam, what it's all about, and the actual 1% efforts on the registration. So um, a bit more background about myself. I am a registered professional engineer. I have 15 years of automated system design and I have successfully uh, transitioned from automated test system design into automated trading. I also written a book called The Bull, the Bear, and the Baboon, um, basically detailing my close to uh, two decades of trading experience, so you can learn a lot uh, from my my book then. Now, um, in terms of, I'm also working closely with the University of Calgary, and we have several joint research projects, and we have um, published several academic uh, paper for those that are really interested into the in-depth formula. Um, you can find uh, some of these papers on it. Now, let's talk about why should you register for the CTA designation. So here it is, it's all about money. Um, so, you know, you have a profitable trading system. What do you do next? I mean, you can offer to manage your friends and family and, you know, other people's money. Um, but how much do you think you're gonna get? A hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million. Well, if you want to get into the serious institutional account, um, the ten million dollar plus, then you have to register yourself as a CTA, which is the Commodity Trading Advisor registration. Now, in this example, we're talking about the revenue model of how you make money as a CTA. So let's say that you're managing a $10 million account. Um, you would get paid a 1.5% management fee, which will yield you $150,000 a year. Now, on top of that, if you are able to obtain an 18% gain per year, um, you would also share on a 20% performance fee, which is $360,000 per year. So in total, you know, you get more than half a million dollar per year by managing $10 million uh, from an institutional account. This is the reason why, as a good Forex trader, you should register yourself as commodity trading advisor because you can earn a lot of money. So before um, getting into the, the CTA, registration, you have to understand that the efforts required prior to the registration. So this is what we're going to talk about first before getting into the nuts and bolts. You have to understand is there are currently 103 4X CT firm managing 35 billion worldwide. This is a huge, serious amount of money. Now, if we break it down, there are two camps. The discretionary trading, that's the manual trading, the, the one that draws trend lines, resistance, support, and dealing with moving average and stuff like that, looking at chart and entering the trade in manually. So, believe it or not, uh, you account for 40% of the AUM, which is stands for asset under management. You're part of the minority. The majority of serious money managers use systematic trading. Uh, there's over 60% of us, and there are 
you know, we're managing more than $21 billion. So that's what you have to understand about the market, who you're up against, and how the industry is moving. They are moving to systematic trading. Now, regarding the discretionary versus systematic trading, uh, research have so shown that there is a higher survival um, for systematic firm than the discretionary. Uh, the systematic trading has better market timing. Um, the result is superior and consistent risk management because basically systematic trading eliminate the human emotion, um, and so hence, it minimizes the chance of failure. How many of you have heard of the turtle traders? Now, basically, we have a picture of Jerry Parker, a top turtle trader trained by Richard Dennis. Basically, what he's saying is that his trading system is 100% systematic, and so that's what you need to understand how important systematic trading solution is and how the industry is moving toward this. So what you need to focus on is your trading result for at least 12 consecutive months. And uh, before you even thinking about your CTA registration, what you need to understand is the sweet spot for return. So if you are targeting 50% or 100% return per year, they're going to pass on you because they understand, the institution money understand that risk and reward go hand in hand. So when your return is way too high, that means you're too risky and they will pass on you. Now, if your return is less than 5%, that means you're too low too safe and they will also pass on you. So the sweet spot for your trading results should be anywhere from 14% to 22%. And that's a good target that you should be looking at. So this is just starting out on your trading result. The second thing that they look at is the number of trades for the 12 consecutive trading months. Now, have you performed more than 2,000 trades? Are you high frequency? Are you scalping? What's your average hold time? What's your slippage? Uh, is it repeatable? Because if you are doing scalping of uh, two, three, four pips per trade, um, it's not scalable. Your, your trading could be fine for $20,000 account, but when you're trading 100,000 or a million, uh, it's not scalable, so hence they would pass on it. So what they want to see is a trading methodology that you can scale it. Now, let's say if you are one of these people that not make too many trades and you only have 50 trades, um, actually that would work against you too because the number is too low because they can't tell whether or not you have an edge and your trading system really works. Um, you're actually just lucky. So you do need a larger sample um, you know, of trade to, for them to determine whether or not you really do have an edge in the market. In terms of risk management, um, it's also very, very important. Actually, I would say that um, the drawdown is more important than the actual return. Because how they look at your trading record is that if you have greater than 50% uh, drawdown, that means it's just too high, too risky, and it will also pass on you. Now, if your drawdown is less than 5%, it's too low. That means it's too good to be true. Because you may claim that you have 5% drawdown, but chances are you have some hidden um, risk, as in you don't use a stop loss you basically have a floating loss and you only cash out when the markets kind of return toward your favor. So basically, they will look at these things. Now, a sweet spot for drawdown is anywhere from 15 to 20% to 20%, or maybe 25%, which is considered reasonable. You have to realize when you're managing $10 million, um, 
20% drawdown is $2 million. That's a lot of money. Whereas if you're trading with $10,000 account, a uh, 20% drawdown is only $2,000. It's no big deal. But when you want to scale up and manage serious money, um, drawdown is very important because, yes, you can risk a $2,000 drawdown, but for institution money, you know, 20% drawdown of $10 million is $2 million a lot. That's really, really serious money. In terms of winning percentage, they also look at your winning percentage in terms if your winning percentage is greater than 90%, guess what? They will pass on you because they know that it's too good to be true and that chances are you are holding on to a losing trade. So your trade could be floating and it could, you know, your, your, your balance uh, looks good, but your equity, you could be holding a trade that is three, four hundred pips against you, and they will pass on you. The other thing that they talk about is your winning percentage. If your winning percentage is really low, like less than 25%, they will also pass on you. What critical in terms of institution money is do you trade with the stop loss? Do you use Martingale betting system? When and how do you exit a loss because to serious investor and large amount of money they need to understand when you get out of a bad trade because as we all know we do get bad trade and it's how we handle these trade and able to generate profit for us so it's very important that you know you have a trading plan and that the the, the losses are managed in such a way that you know, you're not going to experience a 99% winning trade, but one losing trade could wipe out a two years of good trading records. So it's more or less like gambling. It's not really investment or trading. Also, some of the terms that you should be familiar with once you become profitable, because it's not all about the high return what you should be aware of and focus on is called risk-adjusted return ratios. What you need to know is what's your sharp ratio. Sharp ratio are calculated based on monthly and yearly result. Now, here's the formula for it. Uh, guess what? It gets pretty hairy and complicated. So then you also have to understand about your karma ratio. The problem with this is that it required three years of trading result. If you are trading manually, then you know either you wait three years, or if you're trading systematically, then you know you can use your back testing result um, as to calculate the karma ratio. Then you also have to worry about your certain ratio because all these ratios are very important because once you get past the point of having a profitable trading system, it's all about the risk-adjusted return because, you know, you can have like a 40% return, but if you take excessive risk to get there, that's not a good thing either. So that's why these, the calculation of these ratios are very important. Now, what it is with this ratio is that it's very difficult to calculate it. Now, there are Excel formula that you can download from the internet and you have to play around with it. Um, there's also online tool, but the problem is that uh, there's bits and pieces of these two around. So it will take you at least five hours um, to play with all these tools and to generate the correct number. Whereas actually, I have these two as part of the my book. So if you go and purchase my book on Amazon.com for $12, um, the software comes free with it by sending me an email. So I think your time is worth more than the, the $12, hour, $12 because you can buy the, my, my book right now and get the free software which calculate all these professional ratios. Now, in terms of 
sweet spot for this ratio, um, I have these at the end of the book so that you can understand, um, you know, whether or not you have a good risk adjusted return. Now, let's talk about more on the efforts on the Series 3 and Series 34 exam. I know that some of you may be really good in school, so taking exam uh, easy. Other, you know, you may be scared about the exam. So we're going to talk about what is covered in the exam, how long is the exam, and the things you can and focus on. So with the NFA is... The National Futures Association required that you have to pass the Series 3 exam to be qualified to sell commodities and future contracts. Guess what? Currency trading is known as a commodity. So that's why you got to take the CA3 exam. The exam is actually administered by the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, the FINRA. Right? That's a different body altogether. And besides taking the CA3 exam, you also have to get the CA34 exam. This is for people who trade in the Forex market and going to be dealing with the retail customer. In the U.S., believe it or not, if you or your client's account is not greater or equal to $5 million, you are considered a retail customer. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. You know, we figure, figure that a retail customer is somebody with five or ten thousand dollars. Once you get past, you know, um, fifty thousand or a hundred thousand, you would consider those things a serious trader. But in the U.S., they still consider the guy with five hundred thousand account as a retail customer, unless his account goes above five million. Then is now considered a serious player and not a retail customer. So this is the, the, the rule in the U.S. Uh, it may be different for other countries. The Series 3 exam is broken in two parts. There are 120 questions altogether. 85 questions is based on market knowledge. Uh, 35 questions is based on the regulations. You will allow two and a half hours to perform the exam. Actually, to take the exam is quite cheap. It's only $115. Now, uh, in order to study for exam, you can buy the study guide um, from several third parties on the internet, which costs around you know, $200, $250. So it's not too bad. And if you seriously study for this full time, I mean, you can do it in a month time. So it's not too bad. Once you pass the Series 3 exam, then you start work on the Series 34 exam. Now, the Series 34 exam is more Forex focused. Um, there are five major areas the Forex terminology, the concept, the regulation, and the trading computation. Um, seriously, with this, you, they give you a, a, a really basic calculator, and you have to do everything with that calculator. So, um, you know, um, you got to practice the calculation manually. The time for this is 60 minutes. Um, the cost is $70 to take the exam. It's not that bad. And the study guide is around $85. There's 40 questions. And like the previous Series 3 exam, you got to get 70% or more in order to pass the exam. Now, once you pass the exam, um, we're talking about the actual registration process and all the nuts and bolts on it. Um, first of all, you have to register yourself as a firm. Um, you can do it as an individual, but it's better to register as a firm. So it will cost around $2,500, and there's the application fee of $200. Now, uh, as a CPA, then you start paying a yearly fee of $750 per year. Um, with your application, you actually have to get your fingerprinted. And this fingerprinted is actually on the FBI um, 
a sheet and this will be submitted into the FBI to check for any criminal record. So um, you have to understand this. Okay, so the proficiency requirement are the Series 3 and Series 34 exam, which by now you should be prepared. So if you, you know, allocate two or three months to pass these two exams, it's really, really simple uh, to pass it. It's not, um, it's not, you know, it's not like a university entrance exam where you have to study for months. Um, this is, you know, uh, you can do it in two or three months. Then, of course, you have to uh, have the, the application fee of the $85 as the principal of your company, i.e. you will be the owner of your firm, your CPA firm. Once you have that, then what you have to do is have somebody help you generate a disclosure document. Uh, it is known in the industry known as the, the DDoC. And you have to submit it into the NSA for them to approve uh, your document because using this document, this is how you solicit clients. Uh, once the NFA agree and approve your DDoC, um, actually with the DDoC thing here, um, it may be a lengthy process depending whether or not you get some good um, consultant help you with this because the back and forth process of you know recommendation changes, uh, the revisions, the updates, and and so on, it could take anywhere from three weeks to you know several months. So when you have a good um, consultant helping you with this, it would make the process go a lot easier because you are required to produce this document to your clients once they sign up and have you trade their account because then you become a money manager you are able to offer a managed account. As a CPA, we all have to take the anti-money laundering compliance program. Uh, so you pay for this uh, program to a third party. It's not too bad. There's no exam. It's just a course that you take. It's about an hour to an hour and a half and it is an online thing. Then you have to take a professional conduct and responsibility program course. This is known as the ethic exam. Now, there are courses that offer online um, from an hour, but what I would strongly recommend, if you want to have a career as a commodity trading advisor, then select the program that's about four hours it, it's longer, and actually, it's not that much more expensive. It's around seventy-five dollar, and you they would give you more example and more things to be aware of because of all the ethical conduct issues uh, related with um, trading other people's money and how you should act, and so it's very important. Now, as a CTA. Uh, there is the the rule 2-29. Um, basically, once you become a CTA, when people say it's rule 2-29, you know exactly what it is because they hammer this pretty much into your head. It's called the communication with the public and promotional material. So on this slide, basically what it is is that any communication, whether it's via brochure, Material, you have to adhere to the compliance as in you make the statements that look, what trading is not for everybody, it's high risk, and that you have to have a balanced approach between presenting the return versus the risk taken in your uh, trading program. So this is what the NFA rule is. And I think it's very fair because it helps protect you and your clients. So it's important that you, you know what this rule is and how, how your promotional material um, should be represented with the balanced approach.
So um, it's uh, this is the end of uh, my presentation. So as you can see that it actually the CTA uh, registration is more on about the money, but more or less prior to register as a CTA, you have to make sure that you have a good trading record and that you know what you should be focusing on in terms of your drawdown and your return. Because, you know, you can get your CTA designations, but if you haven't done your homework um, a year ahead of that, um, no one's going to select you to manage their $10 million account. So it's very important that you kind of build the foundations of your, your, your firm such that by the time you receive your uh, CTA and be managing a $10 million uh, account, um, you know, you're ready for that. So this is the reason why it's very important that you do all these steps prior to the registration. So this is the end of my presentation. I thank you very much for attending. Now we have about 15 minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, please type it in and I'll try to my best to answer it. Thank you very much for joining uh, my presentation today. So if you have any questions, stick around and I will be gladly answer them. Huh, it seems like no one have any uh, questions. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is that I noticed there are 19 people attending uh, this webinar. So here's what I'm going to do. For the first person who sent me your address to this email address I will send you a free copy of my book um, I think you know it's a benefit for you to attend my uh, webinar today so you can uh, email me your address and the first person to that email address I will then send you a free copy of my book anywhere in the world um, thank you very much um, and I believe that this webinar is being recorded so hence uh, you can view it uh, for later on so uh, thank you very much for everyone attending the uh, webinar and I will be doing another webinar next month so looking forward to seeing you all thank you